Welcome to Adaptation, the show that tells you just because you can doesn't mean you should. The name's Richie McAllister, but people call me the Dick Mick. A little bit of background on me, I'm a dick, hence the name. Back when I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of Saturday morning cartoons. Being that I was born in the mid-80s, I saw all kinds of cracked out shit from stuff that somehow got so popular, they made them into different products. Sometimes products like video games, comic books, and stuff like that ended up as some kind of insane movie or TV show. Now, not unlike the other reviewers on this site, we are all faced with the concept of an adaptation. Not sure what an adaptation is? An adaptation is an action where one medium is reconceptualized for another. In other words, they redo the story that was made for one type of media to make it either continue the story or make it widely spread as to pick up a new fan base. For instance, adapting a TV show is well known as, say, Star Trek, and moving it into a movie-long story arc is an adaptation. Sometimes it works, sometimes... Yeah. In this modern age, adaptations are becoming more and more common due to three factors. Number one, People who were kids back in the day are now adults, and they're clamoring for new material for the nostalgic past. Number two, they're easy to write for. Number three, fucking money. What we're doing on this show is adaptations, and what we're gonna get, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be comparing them to their counterparts. Our subject today is Scooby Doo. Scooby-Doo was a cartoon series that first premiered in 1969 and is still being reinvented and produced until this day with various shows, spin-offs, and TV specials including Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Scooby-Doo has had and still has a following up until this day. But enough about the millions of shows that came out, let's shuffle on to our characters! First, we start with Fred Jones, the ascot-wearing pseudo-leader of Mysteries, Inc. He is the all-round tactician of the gang, making the traps and executing them. Truth be told, he has all the personality of a used oil filter dropped in a porta potty Then we move on to Daphne Blake, the fiery redhead who's about as accident-prone as friggin' Ernest P. Whirl. She's the dead weight because she's not only accidental in nature, but also she gets kidnapped damn near all the time! Take note of this, it's gonna give you an aneurysm later. Of course, what's two preppy idiots without the third wheel? We now go on to Velma Dinkley, the resident nerd. This is the person that actually figures out not only all the clues and what they all mean, but also figures out who the villain is. I know I'm gonna get shit for this, but I kinda find her cute. STOP LAUGHING! Of course, we have the comedy relief. Norville Shaggy Rogers. Yes, his real name is Norville. Look it up. This guy, how do I put it? He's a pothead. Look at him! This human dumpster always seems to find food in abandoned or haunted houses. It doesn't care for the most part if it might be old. He's also the resident scaredy cat. D it's an asshole in a mask! Just grab him! Now for the title character, Scooby-Doo. A talking dog that everyone can hear, most likely because Shaggy's dope is giving everyone else a contact high, making them think anything else but otherwise. He's also a chow hound. I guess when your owner looks like a guy who is likely to be seen at a head shop, it's no surprise that you'd be doing the chronic too. I guess a Scooby snack is code for special brownies. The basic formula for each episode is as follows. The mystery machine breaks down. There's something bad going on where they stop, so they take the case. After a bit of stupid, the gang splits up, usually with Fred, Daphne, and Velma in one group, and Scooby and Shaggy in the other. This leads to Fred and Velma finding clues, Daphne getting kidnapped, and Scooby and Shaggy making contact with the baddie. After that, they figure out it's a fake monster. Make a trap. The trap fails because Fred, being the insipid dumbass he is, makes Scooby and Shaggy the bait making them set off the trap. Nonetheless, in some back-ass words way, they catch the baddie, reveal who it is, with one last shot of American pop culture, the baddie utters the line, And I would've got away with it too, if it hadn't been for you snooping kids! Thus making the episode. Now, here begs the question, how do you make that work for a movie-long basis? The answer? Acid. 
This is hell. Uh, well, we start this train wreck with the final three minutes of any given episode. We see Daphne once again kidnap as she's played by Sarah Michelle Geller? What in the fuck? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you meaning to tell me that Sarah Michelle Geller, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer, is danger prone Daphne? It hasn't even been a full minute and it feels like this movie's already punched me in the nuts. Anyway, in light of this, we cut to Velma, played by... by... Holy fuck. I'm sorry, but I never popped a boner so fast in my life. Did I just say that out loud? Anyway, Velma is played by Linda Cardellini, which proves my theory that nerdy chicks are fucking hot, despite if they're wearing a turtleneck sweater. We had a bad start. It got better, but now we're about to dive into the proverbial shit pile that is the horror that we find Fred is being played by... <laughs> if you didn't get a concussion after seeing this fucking twat waffle, you would have wished you did. This one-dimensional fuckwit is being played by Freddy Prince Jr., the second worst thing to happen to this Hindenburg of cinema. Believe me, it still hasn't reached the bottom of the slurry pit, but let me explain. I still have a personal issue with this pretty boy ass gasket, seeing that I was forced to watch She's All That with my ex. Fuck! This little jizz bucket is the reason why I have an ex! Not to mention the sheer ass raping this dipshit did to the character as a whole, but I'll get to that later. So after going over the plan so us stupid movie watchers know what the hell's going on, we find again Scooby and Shaggy as the BAY! Fuck me! Who in the fuck approved this scary pile of pixelated nightmare fuel? Not only is Scooby scary as fuck, the CGI in this goddamn thing is uglier than my cousin if you set him on fire and place bacon and beef jerky on his ball sack. What the fuck? How could it get any fucking worse? Scooby, what are you doing, man? You know how I said Prince was the second worst thing? This is the first. Matthew Lillard, I hate to say, is perfect for this role, but is exactly why I'm frightened beyond compare. My god, kids are going to be watching this movie. That means that Matthew Lillard is going to be nostalgic for a group of kids, and it's already bad enough they're part of the No Child Left Behind policy. These people are going to be caring about this dipshit's career. Well, the plan, as per usual for Scooby-Doo, goes tits up as we follow a stupid chase scene through the toy factory, ending with everyone getting their asses kicked by their backfired plan, ultimately ending with the scumbag of the hour being caught by unlikely means. Well, unlikely in the sense that if the dipshit had any common sense, he would have saw that coming. Then again, I'm trying to find logic in a movie that's based on a cartoon from the 1960s. Well, we get a cameo from Pam Anderson... Most likely because stripping naked for PETA doesn't exactly pay the bills. And we find a bunch of kids cosplaying as Fred. How awkward. Bust into the factory to get autographs and to find out what the baddie's motivation was. Well, he wanted to bone Pam Anderson. Dude, she doesn't eat meat. Besides, you really want to fuck Tommy Lee and Kid Rock's leftovers? And Fred, being the selfish asshole he is because, well, Freddie Prince Jr. can only be typecast as a selfish asshole, takes credit for the plan and the capture, completely leaving Velma in the cold. Needless to say, Velma is just slightly pissed at it. Fred, I can't believe you took credit for my plan again. She ain't the only one to piss and moan about something. Daffy bitches about being a damsel in distress. I wouldn't be surprised that was actually Geller saying this and the camera was rolling. I do not always get kidnapped. Yes, you do. It's your running gag. Get over it! After Shaggy tries to convince everyone they all have a role to play in the group, using the grossest food-based analogies, this happens. I quit. No way! I was gonna quit in like two seconds. Well, now, well, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Maybe I quit. Velma is tired of being forgotten in the plan making. That makes sense. Daphne is tired of being kidnapped. Mostly her fault, but I guess it makes sense too. Fred quits because it was popular and everyone was doing it. Perfectly reasonable. What? You don't know sarcasm when you hear it? At any rate, everyone books it as Shaggy and Scooby take the van and take off. Did Shaggy always own the van? Bah! 